Kimza Maskell is a famous gymnast who received the first American World All-Around Medal. Coached by the Corollis, she became a household name at the 92 Bronze Medal Olympic team. She trained with many people, including Dominic Mociano and the late Hilary Grivich. Kim Zemeskel was a darling gymnast in the early 1990s. A very tough gymnast, Erica Stokes once said that she could take whatever Caroli threw at her. And this was true. Teammates said she stuck out because she refused to have him see her cry. Just like Dominic Mociano and many other Caroli girls, Zemeskel didn't have a childhood outside of gymnastics. Just barely a preteen, she dropped out of school in seventh grade for correspondence classes, something Bella would constantly complain to parents about if they wanted gymnasts to go the extra mile. She claimed in a 1992 article that she was never robbed of a childhood or brainwashed into believing that gymnastics is her childhood and that focusing only on sports is normal. The line between athlete and person is extremely blurred in gymnastics, said Macy, former Texas Dreams gymnast. Semescal trained at Cincinnati with Mary Lee Tracy when the Corollis retired and sold their gym shortly after the 96 Olympics. While at Cincinnati, she became injured. Devastated that her career was plummeting, Mary Lee Tracy asked her to coach at the gym so that she could continue her love of the sport. Since her career, she has married her now husband, Chris Burdett. Chris worked at the Corollis in the 1990s when Kim was working on a comeback for the 96 Olympics. Chris never really competed in gymnastics as a child, but he always found it interesting. When he got older and could drive the distance to distant gyms, he had a short gymnastics career before coaching at the Corollis. The two married in 1999. They got married at the former Corolli Ranch. Yes, this is not a joke. They got married at the Corolli Ranch. The wedding was physically on their property. The two own Texas Dreams, a facility in Texas that has trained many college and national team members. The gym has also been known to coach many gymnasts whose elite careers were cut short because of injuries. Elites promised to qualify at Olympic trials unable to attend. Others unable to move up the ranks to senior level. Promising gymnasts who were to sign with top-ranked NCAA schools have had to drop down to lower-ranked schools or medically retire in their first year. Some barely even had a career. One only competed one meet of her whole college career and then left the sport never the same. Texas Dreams is one of the modern-day top training facilities in America, but it's also nicknamed Texas Nightmares to some. In 2020, many former elites of Kim spoke up about their abuse that they endured over the years. Statements of verbal abuse, racism, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and assault had surfaced. Semesco claimed that in the end of the Perfect Ten book, that she does not have abusive characteristics like the Corollis did. But she does show similar traits of Marta, including a no-tardy policy, where if you show up on time, you're considered to be late. In a pre-Corolli time period, many forms of verbal abuse was looked upon as joking or tough love, with adults thinking that children will use this as constructive criticism or that it would just simply go over their heads. And although most of it does, there is a fine line between abuse and joking around. Here are some examples. The co-owner, Chris Burdett, has showed us a couple minutes into his life in the Flow Gymnastic documentary years ago. Here's some of the things that he said. All right, here goes heavy lifting. Hey, make it easy on me. When spotting a gymnast on bars. Are you the headliner for SeaWorld show? To Bailey Key. See, every time you do that, Emma, Reagan gets confidence. How many years is it going to take you to get this fault? Come here, I'm gonna give you a neck massage. Signs with hands to strangle child from a distance to Olympian Reagan Smith. It's hard to distinguish verbal abuse from advice and blowing off steam in a healthy way. What I just read are some abusive statements, and now I'll read some off with borderline. Send your butler to get it. 
Do it just like Emma does it, when speaking to Reagan at Balt. Chris and Kim don't yell or raise their voices like Mary Lee Tracy or the Carolis in the video, at least not in the documentary. And some of this could be since Kim was training with both Mary Lee and the Carolis, learning that this wasn't efficient or that it doesn't look good on camera. Ashton Kim did claim that there was numerous shoutings in the gym, though. The culture they set was one of working with exhaustion, berating gymnasts, and unbalanced communication. The constant threat of Kim and Chris yelling or punishing taught me to conceal pain and fear to meet their demands. There are also claims of racism in the gym. Kennedy Baker, whose Twitter post is now private, stated that she was once forced to have her braids cut by Kim before a meet because it was going to be long for the beat, and cut her braids without her consent. It was harm, and then it was nice. As she explains patterns of gaslighting, Kennedy stated that she felt like she had no ownership or control over her body, which is why she no longer gets her hair braided. Typically, for other gymnasts, when their hair was too long, they were forced to put it up in a bun. Kennedy is still shocked that she was forced to cut it when nobody else had to. Another time was with Chris, when he would turn teammates' names into racial phrases and make slave jokes stating that he was the gymnast master. Ashton Kim stated, Chris made jokes about her Asian ethnicity. Of course you want to go to Stanford. Yeah, she'll be my doctor someday. These jokes were enough for me to start hating my last name because it wasn't like the others on the team. Chris also seems to lack empathy to those who were coached. Once, when Ashton Kim was taking donations for a cancer fundraising marathon, Chris donated to the cause. He then replied, Hope you're doing well, despite the mental condition you seem to be suffering from if you're excited to be running a marathon. Given her childhood of losing two people close to her from cancer, I'm not sure if this could be taken in a funny way. I'm sure he meant it in a joking way, but given the marathon's charity and the reason for running, this was not appropriate to say to one another. Many people who spoke up about the abuse they faced were applauded. Emily Stone supported Ashton through Twitter, along with many others like Veronica or Ariana Guerrera. Since the 2020 claims, some gymnasts have left the sport. Some have gone off to college or left to go to another gym, like Cindy Barrows. Every one of their gymnasts have gone off to NCAA, have suffered with some sort of injury.